The beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness. Now John was clothed with camel's hair and a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. That's how the gospel of Mark starts. So here's the funny thing about the word gospel. A lot of us use it to refer to the stories about Jesus in the New Testament, which is fine. And sometimes I hear it used as a litmus test for good preaching. Folks will ask, does the pastor preach the gospel? Which is also fine. And sometimes people use the word gospel in place of the word truth. As in, everything Oprah says is gospel to me. But at the time the New Testament was written, the word gospel meant something quite different. See, 2,000 years ago, the word gospel was only used as a term for something like a military news flash. It was used when a messenger proclaimed that a victory had been won by the empire or the king. It was a pronouncement of good news. Something had happened that was good for the people. This sort of announcement was one that elicited a response, like when the owner of a crowded bar yells, drinks are on the house, everyone would naturally raise their mugs and say, yeah. The gospel according to Mark, the first gospel account to be written down, begins with these words. The beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, Son of God. We don't really notice it anymore, but that is one loaded sentence. Not only did the term gospel have military connotation, so did the term Son of God. This was a phrase used for emperors who were worshipped as gods. So basically, the first hearers of Mark's stories about Jesus may have heard that first sentence as this, the beginning of the pronouncement of the military victory of Jesus Christ, the victorious holy emperor. And given a statement like that, they might have expected nothing short of liberating regime change. Instead, what they got was John the Baptist. With his camel's hair and rope ensemble, he probably looked like he should have been on the corner of 6th and Broadway holding a cardboard sign that says, We'll preach for locust and wild honey. Obviously, this is a weird way to announce good news. It certainly isn't the triumphant victory that Mark's audience expected. But maybe the crazy desert preacher is actually the perfect way to introduce the whole Jesus thing. Maybe cognitive dissonance is the only way to set us up for hearing about what God is doing. Because when it comes down to it, nothing else in the Gospels meets our expectations either. As odd as they are, the first few verses of the first Gospel tell me a lot about what all the Gospels have in store. Personally, I kind of expect something called good news to mean that I won the lottery, or I get free Starbucks for a year, or at least that I get to sit in the good seats. But instead, I get Jesus. I get a guy who was born under questionable circumstances, grew up in an unimpressive town, ate with all the wrong people, touched lepers, and said really disturbing things like, the first shall be last, and the last shall be first, and love your enemies. And as if that weren't enough, the guy goes and gets himself killed in a totally preventable way. And just like the original hearers of the gospel, I think, are you kidding me? That's like the worst good news I've ever heard. But in a way, that's the point. Because the fact is, anything I would come up with as good news would be hopelessly selfish. That's exactly why I need the gospel of Jesus Christ and not the Gospel of Nadia.